My name is Christy Haney. I graduated from Hastings College in 2002 uh, with a degree in biology. Now I currently work for the U.S. Forest Service as a wildland firefighter. The firefighting season is usually, my current job is six months on, six months off, give or take a few months depending on um, money, budgets. Um, so usually I end up working about eight to nine months out of the year and then have about three months off. So like a teacher's uh, work schedule, except it's opposite. So I get winters off where they get summers off. A typical day as a wildland firefighter, if you're on a fire assignment, is long hours. You wake up early, uh, march in line to the, the tents where they serve breakfast, and then uh, get a briefing. Usually get in the vehicles, drive a little closer to the work site, probably get another briefing, and then actually hike to the actual fire line. Work for most of the day, probably about eight o'clock or so, shut down, hike back, drive back, eat supper, and then go sleep in your tent that night. After Hastings College, I got a job at Scotts Bluff National Monument in Western Nebraska as a resource management specialist and first realized that these jobs existed, that they're not all city firefighters who run into burning buildings or um, volunteer firefighters that you would see in the most of the small communities here. So you can actually get paid to do this job, which is kind of cool. I try and find these magical moments, I call them magical moments, where you're walking around working and all of a sudden you have this little light bulb moment of like, oh my god, we get paid to do this. I think it was 2012 and I was on a 20 person hand crew in central Idaho and there were uh, multiple fires going on. Mid afternoon typically is when fires start to heat up and burn more actively. The fire moved from a ground surface burning fire and uh, burned in some ladder fuels till eventually that energy dominoed into a canopy run, which is a very extreme, very intense, uh, burns from the forest floor all the way up to the treetops and ran up and burned over uh, where our vehicles had been parked the previous day. Um, so we're hiking out, um, there's spot fires all along the road that we're hiking out, which is not a good sign. <laughs> um, all the people in qu equipment are trying to drive out as quickly as possible. Many of us jumped on vehicles, so there's like 15 of us piled on this vehicle, every little cubby space, um, just grabbing on and driving away. Um, as the fire blew up, uh, we lost some equipment. That was probably one of the scariest moments. Some people that tend to do well in firefighting generally come from uh, like college female athletes and there's a lot of initiatives right now even stemming from Washington down to the regional level and down to the field level of encouraging women to get into this business and it's called women in fire permanent fire jobs only about 11 percent are women athletes have done really well in firefighting because they're used to the the physical nature of doing a collegiate sport as and pushing themselves mentally and physically which is similar to wildland firefighting at times because we train a lot. Also, you're used to a team setting. Having that, uh, the advanced skills in basic reading and writing and uh, learning how to learn are elements that will help you succeed as you go through the fire career. I felt that the college really supported extracurricular activities from athletics to band to forensics, whatever anybody was involved with. And the professors not only um, encouraged that um, intermingling of extracurricular activities with academics but they knew you by name and I even had professors say hey that was a really nice jump shot along the baseline in the second half um, so they actually <laughs> so they actually paid attention to you and, and cared about you